Every three minutes in the UK, someone suffers a heart attack. And last year, that was my dad. 30% of heart attacks are fatal, and luckily, yours wasn't. I must be in the 20... Oh. <laughs> I must be in the 70%. Yes. Would you like to share a little bit about what that experience was like? Yes, it was a strange experience. Uh, everything seemed to be going well. Just had me sandwiches for lunch. But I just felt different. But I can't explain what it right. was. I think most people would think an, of a heart attack as, you know, a pain in the chest and you can feel it going down one arm. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I would have guessed. I had a sort of tightness in the chest, but not, I wouldn't call it a pain. But it felt different. Then I felt sort of slight stiffness in the neck. And I just thought oh, I must have slept wrong, but it's a silly thing to think of because this was lunchtime and it hadn't hurt during the day. Yeah. I thought, oh, I'm getting a toothache. I could feel it going up here into the tooth. I thought, what I did next, I don't know why I did it, but for some reason I googled symptoms for a heart attack. And it was only then the, it was the British Heart Foundation's webpage that came out. Right. Which did actually say that quite often you get a sensation in your chest which goes up through your neck into your jaw. Something I'd never heard of before and I suddenly panicked thinking, oh no, I'm not having a heart attack, have I? And I sort of dialed 999 and asked them what I ought to do and they said, we're coming out to uh, see you whether you like it or not. Was it considered to be a severe heart attack? No, or I think it was just a mild one, very mild really. It was still a bit of a wake up call, although it was mild, it took me a, a time to get back. It was, if you like, thanks to the British Heart Foundation and the hospital because they sort of work together yes. and all the literature they give you, I suddenly realised just how much I didn't know about the heart. And so with their help, their support, probably, I would say, probably got back to better than what I was before the heart attack. Yeah, yeah. But it took some time. When I came home, I, did, I felt a nervous wreck. I didn't dare do anything. But the guide from the British Heart Foundation quite said, you'll feel like that, and just walk down the garden and back. That's all you need to do for your first yeah. day out. Then walk a little bit further each day. You have to keep trying your things, and because with their help, I changed my diet, uh, and things started to improve. So at this point, you're walking how far a day? It sort of worked its way up. The Obje the objective we were set is to do at least, or to try and do two miles a day, work our way up to two miles a day. Right. And I can't, to be honest, remember how long that took, but it took a few weeks. Just weeks, not months. Yeah. Though. And I found I could do two miles a day quite easily. Right. Um, so what made you decide to push further than two miles then? That's a good question, actually. <laughs> I just thought... Why stick at two miles? I can do more. And so I just kept walking. Because they kept saying, walking is good for you. And of course, around here, some a lot of the walks end up on what is signposted as the trans Trail. Yes. I had no idea what it was. I knew, obviously knew you knew could it tell was. it was some form of national yeah. yes. path, uh, path. Having started walking so much and seeing these signs so often, I did actually have a look at what the trans Trail was and I suddenly realised I actually went from coast to coast. It actually goes all the way from Southport on the uh, west coast to Hornsey on the east coast. And I don't know exactly how it came about, but I thought, I wonder if I could actually walk <laughs> that far. I'm walking more and more each day. If I keep walking, could I, could I actually do a walk? And if so, why don't I do it for the British Heart Foundation because of all the good work, all the um, research they carry out and all the help they give to people with heart problems. And I thought that would be a way of sort of saying thank you for the way they've given me confidence. Right. It's a challenge, but no, I could do no, it. Not, not a bit daunting. It, I suppose it was, yeah, a bit daunting, but exciting, right. a challenge. 
I talked to people about it and they thought I was nutty. Um, that was my no. first impression. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you work, walk that far? Yeah. But I thought, no, I'll, I'll try that. Kept practicing walking. And at weekends I was sort of easily doing, you know, 15, 20 mile walks. Took the Tissington Trail for about 18 miles. Then there was a hotel, stayed the night and come back the next day just to make sure I could do, do 20 it miles. Do days in a row. Yeah, yeah. and I could. So yeah, but what, two it. days is different than 12 days. Though, I know, I know, yeah. But I did it. You did? Yeah. Congratulations. And raised a bunch of money for the British Art Foundation. Yes, over £2,500. Nice. So yeah, if you want to find out more about my dad's charity walk, there's a link to a PDF down in the description, along with links to the British Art Foundation, and of course, projectforawesome.com, where you can go and vote for this video, or any other charities you like, and the top ones will receive donations from, from the Project for Awesome. Do you know the Nerdfire sign? No. No. What's that? That's uh, Spock. Sp Spock, cross, cross arms. I can't How do can it. you not do it? Thanks for watching, DFTBA. <sighs>